This year is a very exciting year for our country, not just with the elections, but sport. We've got a Cricket World Cup and the Rugby World Cup. And maybe this year we don't have a lot of hope, so maybe the cricketers can bring it back and they don't do the C word this year. <laughs> yes, if there's no, not a lot of expectation, maybe they can do it. It's AFCON as well, the African Cup of okay. Nations in the uh, soccer. Um, so, Peter, we're talking about professional athletes and wealth management for professional athletes. We have to recognize that they are vastly different than your, I would say, normal clients their age. They've got a bit when more they, money. They've got a bit more money at a young age. We'll get there. In South Africa, it's mostly dominated by rugby, cricket, and, and soccer, and which is our big, three biggest sports. So, the players in the often of the time they get paid firstly earn big salaries at a very young age from after school they can get real big salaries at a very young age they also get paid bonuses or match fees that's big lump sum money that also been paid to them they also receive a lot of free stuff i mean mostly their food will be included a lot of the time or accommodation will be included they have sponsors for for clothing they go to all they can get nice money events. from the sponsors. They get money from the sponsors as well and the endorsements. So there's a, a nice inflow or and, and not a lot of expenses. Um, so they are in a very different position than, like I said, normal people at 19, you go and study, you only get pocket money from your parents and they use that for a couple of beers and then it's done. So these people actually have a great opportunity to get ahead in life financially. So by the age of 30 or 35, they should be well ahead of their peers and actually from there on just goes through in life. But we all know that does not happen. There are many examples overseas, abroad and in South Africa where sports people, they actually had a study um, two years after they retire. More like 70% of them are actually kind of near bankruptcy or fall into mm. depression. I mean, it's, it's shocking statistics, and, and I've done some research, and there's four reasons why they are not good with money. And I think, firstly, um, just to touch on them, is the lure of the tangible, and that's all just like physical stuff. And I think in the present age with Instagram, and you have to show your wealth, and your teammates, if, the more you show, the more successful, because they don't know how big your contract is, but the more you spend, they will say you've got a big contract. So there's a lot of competition that you want to show how much you earn. Oh, they are and part of the Joneses. Their Joneses is a bit different than my university buddies. Yes, you was. start to live in a bubble and you think that's normal mm -hmm. to earn 40000 at the age of 19. You know, that's not normal. So they compare themselves with each other and not versus their peers that's studying. Then secondly, there's a lot of the time there's mis misplaced trust. They put their trust in the wrong people. One of their buddies opened a beer brewery or whatever the case may be and now they're investing so they want to invest but it's in not really in good investments they make they misplace their trust and they misplace their money when they do that and then thirdly it's the family matters the moment you get time who comes running first it's most of the time it's, it's the family that actually comes and a lot of the time the people need to have help their family um, so for each individual that be, will be a different scenario as well but then lastly there's great expectations on them as well. Like, I mean, on the sport field, but also expectations in spending. You know, it's all of a sudden you have all these friends around you and they all expect something from you. So it's very important to understand the lifestyles of these individuals and then to work with them um, to really set them up for the life after, after sports. And try to educate them. I think yeah. that's the most important part. With education in our country and with finance especially, and that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, to really educate them. And I just want to end up, these athletes need to take risk on the field. You know, so when, when you're on the rugby or the soccer or the cricket field, you, there comes a time when you need to take risk. So it's born, it's in, ingrained in them that they need to take risk. And then they want to do the same on the financial side as well. Like you say, education perhaps is where we can start to put more emphasis, especially for these young sports stars. Thank you. Thank you.